Hello, hello. Hope all is well. Um, back at it in the five-minute pool um, on ICC. Um, hope you enjoy it. Let's just get started. Um, I put myself in the queue, so hopefully uh, someone will come up pretty soon. I feel like I'm close to catching a cold, unfortunately. Um, I feel like there's just been this uh, this bug going around the office, and uh, I might be next, you know? Um, so uh, I'm hoping that I'm not, so uh, I'm just going to drink tea intermittently dur during the video, but um, I'm really hoping I'm not next. Um, although it would be sort of funny if I was, because I've lasted a long time, you know, uh, I mean, if you look in, if you look at all these like scary movies from back back in the day, it was always the black guy who was first to go down, and uh, <clears throat> I've been relatively resilient, <laughs> so uh, so I don't think um, I'm gonna have any problems. But uh, I'm gonna knock on wood and um, hope that I don't. And this is the thing about ICC that's been annoying me recently: is you're in the queue and you're waiting for a little while and no opponent. And this is why someone was asking me the other day, is ICC better than chess.com? Should I get ICC account? And I honestly think chess.com is on the rise. Um, I pretty much play ICC out of habit because I like the pool because I don't know if they have the equivalent of a five-minute pool on chess.com. Maybe one of my uh, uh, my viewers, uh, well, maybe one of, one of the viewers can actually let me know, how is there a five-minute pool on chess.com? Is it strong? Yada, yada. I use chess.com, but normally I have to put out actual seeks when I do that. So Anyway, this is a Sicilian, uh, C5 and E6. That's usually inviting a con or a time and off. I'm going to go knight C3 first. Um, doesn't change too much. It's just that now I can go D4 next. And uh, queen C7. Queen C7 is a line that's actually a really popular time and off variation. I'm going to go knight db5. Um, the idea here is after queen b8, the queen has to stand that diagonal to defend against knight d6. I'm going to go bishop e3. And after a6, I'm going to go bishop b6. Very unusual idea, um, but the point is is that in this position, white gets a queen for uh, uh, gets a queen for three minor pieces, and a really interesting material imbalance is on the board. So... Queen g4, king f8. Yeah, this is all very, very, very interesting because now the question is, uh, what is the dynamic in the position? Queen. Usually the three minor pieces are good enough against a queen, and it really comes down to who's who's active quicker. And uh, I'm going to be really curious to see how he plays. So d5, very interesting. Uh, I'm going to take on d5, I think. Or maybe because knight f6 is a real threat now, attacking my queen and my... Um, and my pawn, so I'm going to play that. And then knight f6, very interesting move. He, I guess he didn't want to go knight. Um, he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go knight. Uh, uh, he didn't want to go. He didn't want to take on d5 with a pawn and get isolani. So I'm going to go queen e2. And I assume he's going to play knight takes d5. But e takes d5 might be a good choice too, just playing really active. Um, <clears throat> so already a very unique position is on the board. I mean, you don't see queen versus. Uh, versus three minor pieces very quickly in the opening. The one thing he's, one problem that White is going to have here is development of uh, the, the, the light squared bishop um, on c8. That's going to be one problem. And another potential problem may be connecting the rooks. So h5, very original idea trying to connect the rooks. Essentially, uh, maybe just going to play rook h6 and develop it that way. Um, and now I have to figure out what is my plan? How do I do things here? Hmm. Very, very, very complicated position. I'm going to go... I don't know what I'm going to do. This is extremely complicated. I'm going to go rook d1. The idea is maybe I kick this knight away with c4 at a later juncture. But I, uh, but yeah. Uh, and knight f, knight e5, very interesting move. And what do I do? I'm gonna go c4, very very double edged. But I think, I think it's it's a I'm do I do good to take control of the d file. Knight f4, okay. And now.
what to do. What to do in my position. Very tough to figure out. Um, I have to move my queen. Um, I think queen e4. Or maybe queen e3. Ah, queen e3. Very strong move. Attacking the knight on f4 and also threatening queen c5 check. Maybe this was missed. Maybe this was missed by poison pawn. Because uh, now this queen c5 check is a real threat and I'm also attacking this knight on f4 and I'm not sure that you can defend both. In some lines, I also might be threatening rook d8 check. Um, uh, maybe uh, at some juncture, rook d8 might be an idea. But right now, queen c5 and the knight on f4 need to be solved. And knight g4 covers the knight on f4, but does not defend against queen c5 check. And so this should be the game right here, because I'm just picking off the bishop on c7. And uh, you could see here, actually... Um, uh, Black never really got to c developing the queen side, and that was really the problem. So very short game, very interesting game. That line, actually, uh, just to go back with bishop e3, a6, knight, bishop b6, this whole line uh, uh, with the queen for three minor pieces, I have seen in some correspondence games. Um, there's one in particular where I saw queen g4, and the move uh, that I saw was actually g6. I have a feeling that king f8 is a slight mistake. Even though it doesn't weaken it doesn't weaken the pawn structure and g6 does, uh, or weaken some squares around the king, g6 weakens f6 and h6, I think king f8 really makes it difficult to activate the rooks or connect them. And um, yeah, maybe a mistake. But anyways, crazy line, don't know much about it. That's all I know. Um, so... How's that for a first game? Uh, a really sharp uh, queen for three minor pieces position. Um, that is actually theoretical. So anyways, we're in the pool again, and uh, uh, again, uh, I'm going to try to uh, keep my complaining to a minimum about waiting, but uh, I don't love this. Um, and please, honestly, get back to – let me know uh, what's – like if I should be doing chess.com more or uh, – I mean, I'm not going to totally be swayed by uh, – you guys, but uh, you definitely can. Uh, you definitely do uh, come into consideration. So, um, so please let me know. What else has been happening in the chess world? Um, I saw the new Grand Prix uh, uh, stuff is coming out in terms of the participants for the new FIDE Grand Prix, um, and there were a lot of a lot of no shows as far as the top players are concerned. Um, Carlson isn't participating. Caruana is not participating. Uh, uh, who else isn't participating? Kramnik isn't participating, and um, So isn't participating. And some of these guys don't need to participate because they anticipate having a high enough rating to qualify for the candidates tournament. But you don't, you don't, you have to not forget that the FIDE world, um, the FIDE uh, uh, candidates tournament is actually there's a, a spot for that tournament based on whoever wins the FIDE Grand Prix. So uh, it's a it's a little bit surprising that a lot of these guys are pulling out, but the other reason is, and this is why it's not surprising, is because um, it's because of the prize funds they're lower than last time, um, and in addition to that, they're just you know they're really like poorly run and organized. They're sort of waited to the last minute to to be really set up. And uh, it's just not – there's a lack of professionalism. That's the best way I can put it. There's just a lack of professionalism around these events. And uh, the chess world doesn't win, um, so uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. Anyways, I played b3, bishop b2. Uh, I couldn't help myself. And g6, I really can't help myself. I want to play g4. It's not correct, but it's an interesting move, um, just exploiting the fact that the diagonal is open. And what do you know? Uh, he sort of agrees with me because he also is not playing. Um, and okay, h6 is played. I'm going to go h4 now. Um, again, not entirely correct, but I'm just in, I'm feeling inspired, you know? So um, the one problem with the structure uh, is that I need I still couldn't play g5 because after h takes g5, I have to take the knight. So I'm going to play rook g1 to force through g5. So... Uh, I'm being a little bit cynical, but um, uh, it's all in good fun, and at least I was able to erase the dark-squared bishop. 
Now it's very important for me to get to control the dark squares. If black got to play e5, that'd be no no. So I'm going to go d4 to control the e5 square. And I do have some control of the dark squares. That's the benefit of this of this g of this early g4 g5. Uh, so I am going to try and play this positionally uh, a little bit, even though I went for this aggressive plan. Um, the problem with my setup is I'm lacking uh, uh, kings or king side castling and that sort of thing. So c5 I don't actually like because I'm going to play d takes c5 and he can't take with a knight because of queen d4 check. So he has to play queen a5 check. And something tells me that's not the best way to play this position. Because uh, after queen a5 check, I can go c3 or knight bd2, but I think I'm going to go c3. Yeah, I'm going to go c3. And after queen takes d5, I'm going to go queen d4 check. And the reason I'm going to do this after c takes d4... Um, I think uh, I have a, I still have really good control of the dark squares on the king side, specifically e5 and f6, and I also have a little bit more space. And I think it's a little bit easier to develop the rest of my pieces. This knight on, this bishop on c8 and this knight on d7 aren't looking so hot, and I can very quickly play knight c3 and rook c1. So uh, I, I actually like white here. I think white is uh, slightly better, even even with my escapade in the opening. Because uh, now it's again, it's it's very tricky to develop the rest of the queen side for black. So I think b6 needs to be played maybe to develop. Uh, like actually b6, I have knight b5, which is a little annoying. Knight b5 might be the move here actually, just giving giving me um, another uh, my giving my rook access to the seventh rank and uh, attacking black's most active minor piece, which is the knight on d6. So actually, okay, a6 stops knight b5. So good for him for spotting that knight b5 was an idea. It does weaken the b6 square, so maybe I can go knight a4 here. Knight a4 does give up uh, uh, the e4 square, though, so I'm going to go bishop d3 instead uh, to effectively cover the e4 square. And uh, I do want to get my rook to c7, but I think this is the better approach now. So, all right, so b5, okay, not a big surprise. And I would love, love, love to get some infiltration on the dark squares. I'm going to go knight e2, and the idea is actually to go knight f4. Um, rook a7 covers uh, covers uh, the c7 square, but maybe I have rook c6 now. Now I'm going to go knight f4. I don't see any... My rook on c6 is not dominant, so I'm not going to rush for that. Um... Again, I have really good control of the dark squares here, and that's where I'm counting on my advantage being a thing. Now I just need to connect my rooks, so I'm going to go king d2. I might throw in rook c6, actually. Maybe I should have thrown it in last move, but again, I'm sort of slow playing this position but and getting all my pieces to uh, squares where I think they're well deployed. And uh, again, he and now my, that my bishop's controlling e4 and f5 squares, if he ever puts his knight there, I'm just going to snap it off and try to play on the dark squares. So um, I'm liking my activity right now for sure. Uh, loving my activity actually. So if bishop b7 actually, the problem with bishop b7 is actually it allows rook c7, uh, not only pinning the bishop to the a7 rook, but it also attacks the d7 knight. So uh, that's why black is actually thinking here because it's actually pretty difficult to make a decent move. Um, so, uh, that's really good. Good sign. Uh, so bishop b7 anyway, and I'm wondering what he does after rook c7, because the knight would have to move. So I'm going to go rook, rook c7, because now this knight on d7 is, I think, forced to move, or rook d8 is played, but again, this rook on a8 and a7 is pinned, so not great. And actually here, I think I might have knight e5 as a resource. The idea is that after knight takes e5, d takes e5, I'm also threatening knight takes e6 check. And I think that should be decisive. So I'm going to go knight e5. Um, and I think this is just winning because uh, the knight would have, if the knight takes, um, and I think it does have to take, I have d takes e5 first, not knight takes e6 check right away because um, he can move the king and then my d3 bishop is hanging. 
But uh, at, at the end of, after D takes E5, I have Knight takes E6. And yeah, what do you know? Black actually resigns. And again, a very short game, but it's really about the buildup and pressure of, uh, of the pieces. And then blunders come. Um, I'm not playing in some sort of crazy going for checkmate style. I'm just playing positionally and good things are happening. Uh, I've seen a lot of emphasis uh, uh, by way of questions about how do you play positionally? How do you play positionally? And it's really about uh, playing with all of your pieces. Look at the difference in, in the piece activity here. All my pieces are developed, deployed, and doing things. And they, they're they doing things because I'm a bit patient. So I get them all going, and then eventually they spring to life. So it's amazing what happens when all your pieces are just active and deployed. And it's not – I know I'm making it seem like it's pretty easy. Um, I'm just saying it's not impossible. That's all I'm saying. So anyways, back to the queue. Hopefully I get a, a, a – a stronger opponent this time because you might also just be saying, "Well, okay, he's just creaming at 1900 right now," and that would be true. I definitely am uh, giving these 1900s a hard time, as I should be giving them a hard time. You know, so uh, maybe that's allowing me to get some sort of uh, leverage and freedom with the weird openings I'm playing. Um, but, anyways. Um, back to the FIDE Grand Prix talk. I, it just, again, the organization is appalling. Um, if anyone out there wants to read more about some of the leadership in charge, Veslin Topolov had a brilliant, I think, paragraph, two paragraph response about why he's not participating. And look, honestly, like, he's older, like, he's probably, it would be it's highly unlikely that he'd win the Grand Prix and actually qualify for the Candace tournament. But why he isn't participating, even though he's invited? Check that out. Um, I saw on Chess24 there was a link to a reason why he wasn't uh, playing, and I think you can find it on his website, and it's really just a strong condemnation of the leadership of FIDE. Anyways, Knight of 3, D6. Um, I'm going to go for a Nardorf if allowed. And knight takes D4, Knight of 6. If he goes Knight C3, I will be going A6. And uh, sharp position on the board again. Bishop G5. Okay, um... Go e6, and uh, if f4, I'm actually going to go queen c7, and that's what I'm going to do. It's, uh, okay, he didn't go for the bishop takes f6, and no one goes for this anymore. It's really annoying. All right, so knight, I don't know this stuff well, that's the thing. So I'm going to go knight c6, um, okay, and then bishop d7, and... Uh, yeah, the problem is I really don't know this stuff well. Um, I'm going to take on d4 and go bishop c6. My bishop looks pretty good there, uh, hitting this long diagonal. And, uh, okay, I'm happy that he went bishop takes f6 here because now I have the two bishops. So back to the positional conversation. I have the two bishops. That is a long-term trump for me. Um, now, now the question is what to do now. I'm really liking the look of this h5 move, and the idea is just to sort of, if my bishop can somehow get an active diagonal here, it'd be awesome. So if I can go h5, and then if he plays g5, I can play f takes g and bishop g7, that would be awesome. So I'm going to go h5. Um, the other positional point about it is if he goes g takes h5, I can go bishop h6. Um, and yeah, my idea would have been to, that these double pawns would be a weakness. So he went, uh, he went, uh, h3, but I'm happy with that because now I get to exchange that isolated h-pawn and trade a rooks and trade a pair of rooks that may nullify uh, the pressure of uh, uh, white's position on my king. So I think black is just doing really well here. Um, I could keep my king in the center, but it's probably a bit better if I connected my, uh, my got my rook active, so I'm going to castle. And then I'm just going to go king b8. Um, uh, just to get my uh, king a little bit safer, and uh, I think black is just better here, because black has the two bishops, and that means a lot. Now, I do have to look out for knight d5 tricks, uh, because if, again, if, if let's say the queen was on d3 right now, then knight d5 might be a strong move, or, anyways, knight, knight d5 is an interesting move sometimes. Uh, rook d2, okay, I'm not impressed with that, I'm just going to go king b8, um, and... Uh, 
Okay, rook h6. Rook h2. I missed this idea, honestly. Um, but again, I'm not so impressed. I'm going to go rook c8, line my rook up, uh, and my rook and queen up against the c2 pawn. And, um, hmm. And rook h7, I'm not, I think this rook is a little bit wayward. My queen is protecting f7. And I'm gonna sh I'm gonna lash out with d5, and the idea is that he can he can take with the knight if I play bishop takes d5 because of queen c2 mate. So I think uh, I think again here, um, black is in the driver's seat um, because now this queen has to move, uh, and uh, the knight can't capture the bishop right now. And I think this again this rook in h7 is a little bit off sides. So if I could somehow loosen up this knight on c3, either by bishop b4, or maybe even bishop a3. I'm looking at bishop a3 now. Looks very, very interesting. So I'm going to play bishop takes h1. Right? Aren't I going to do that? Maybe bishop a3. I don't know. Even bishop a takes a2 is a move, actually. I'm going to go for that. Bishop takes a2. It's a cute move. And the point is, um, knight takes a2 is impossible because of, uh, well, uh, this nasty, nasty queen takes a2 mate. And I just went a pawn. Um, and bishop e4, okay. Um, that is a move. And now I'm going to just go bishop c4 back. And uh, I've won a pawn, a very important pawn around uh, black's king. I get about White's king. Queen f3 does line up these pieces a little bit annoyingly towards me, and so I'm going to go bishop d6 first. The idea is just to attack f4, and if he plays f5, my bishop would get a very, very valuable square on e5, where he'd be pointing at the knight and well positioned. So f5 was played. I'm happy to see that, because now I'm going to go bishop e5, and look at that bishop pointing at uh, black's king side. Or against at White's king side. Um, look, I look really good here. And again, I'm I'm playing positionally again. F takes e6. I have to play bishop takes because I'm not. I can't play pawn takes. And uh, I'm looking pretty good here. Um, I'm a pawn up. Uh, you might say, oh, it's a double pawn, but it's a pawn. I have the bishop pair. My rook and queen are lined up against c2. Um, and uh, I'm also just hitting c3. I'm just threatening to win another pawn right now with bishop takes c3, so I think the knight has to move. So, always good to pose your opponent questions, and that's what I'm doing. Um, if the knight goes to d5, I have the very strong queen a5, which threatens queen e1 check, um, which is very annoying. And rook h3, I think, is a mistake, because now I can play bishop takes c3 and permanently weaken white's structure. But maybe he wants me to take, and he thinks he'll be safe. I don't know. My bishop is so strong that maybe I need to actually not take it and go queen b6. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go queen b6. And the point is, is now I'm uh, also maybe threatening queen e1 check, and uh, also... Uh, yeah, it just looks... I don't have to take on c3 right away, so why do I? Um, he doesn't have any uh, other... He, pre he doesn't have any pressure against my king, so I might as well try to ma manufacture a few more threats before I trade everything. And the other idea with queen g1 is I'm also threatening to uh, win that pawn on g4. And if I'm two pawns up with the two bishops, then it's a much easier conversion. So, um, Papilo is definitely in bad shape here, because... Uh, queen g1 is just a threat. Okay, queen g2 defends against that threat, but again, there's got to be something here. I'm going to go queen b4, uh, attacking this knight on c3, and uh, also keeping an eye on the bishop on e4. And uh, it's just it very patiently prodding. Um, I don't, I, again, I, I could swap and, and be really, you know, demonstrative about it, but there's just no need, so I, I have time to be patient. Um, and the other thing about queen b4 is that now after bishop takes c3, I might have queen a3 check, which was not a resource I had before, forcing the king to the d file. 
And what do you know? When you're faced under pressure for so long, you make blunders. And rookie three is a blunder because of bishop f4, which uh, just wins the exchange. Um, and I'm going to go bishop g5, which is a cheeky way of saying I still have this pin and there's nothing you could do about it. Um, I don't. I could take right away, but it's just a nice cheeky move that suggests you ha you're still in a lot of trouble. And there's another idea behind it. If the king goes to b1, if the king goes to b1, I'll take on e3, and then I'll play rook takes c3 and swap everything out. Bishop d3 was played, and that is probably a mistake because now I have queen d4, which. Uh, just threatens to win the rook for nothing. And amazingly here, if knight d1 is played, I'll have queen takes d3, which sets up a million cross pins. All right, king e3 is played. Um, again, there's still this pin, so I'm not going to even take it. I'm going to go rook h8, putting more pressure on, uh, on uh, white's position, because now I can potentially go to h2. So um, again, there's no... I could swap out, but I just want to illustrate how strong these bishops are and how getting all your pieces active really does do wonders. And now he's attacking my knight, and I'm still not going to take. I'm going to play queen takes g4 because I still maintain this pin on the e3 rook. And so the queens are off, and I still have this pin. And uh, rook e3, okay, um, doesn't do much to solve that problem. So now I'm going to go... Rook, um, rook d8 check, and if bishop d3, I'm going to go rook e8. And again, this pin on e3 is just decisive. So I actually can just win the rook for free. And, uh, yeah, uh, again, um, two bishops. Weak squares, um, active pieces, getting every piece involved, um, king, getting the king to safety, uh, making important prophylactic moves for the king. This is the positional side of chess, um, and this is where, per honestly, I thrive. Um, the tactic stuff is my is my my weak my weaker the weaker part of my game. Um, so let's see who's up next. Um, so those were three very clean games, um, but uh, I think uh, I think if I get if I get someone a little bit stronger, um, there'll be it'll be a, a more interesting fight or a more uh, a more balanced fight we could say. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, so maybe it will be a f balanced fight, but uh, I think I like my chances here as well. Um, so knight c6, bishop b5, and I'm going to play another positional line, uh, a6, I'm going to play bishop takes c6, and this is, as we know, is the exchange for Real Lopez, and the whole argument here is that if white has, um, h3, h5, oh, the fishing pole, I don't, this is not something you see every day, if, the whole point in this position is that if white has, um, what am I trying to say, if, if all the pieces are traded and white manages to trade all of the pieces, it is in fact white that is. Um, it's in fact white that has a winning position because of this endgame. Um, so um, so it's always important to keep that in mind when playing this setup. That uh, that white white why would have a winning endgame if all the pieces are traded because of the double pawns on the c file. Uh, a winning pawn endgame that is. Um, what to do? What to do? I'm going to go rook e1. There's some positions where you can take on g4, and I'm trying to figure out which ones those are. Um, I was thinking rook e1 might be, might be threatening to take on g4 now because I can go knight g5, um, and then king f1, actually, but I can't be completely sure. So this is what my idea, at least, is my idea is to take on g4 and play knight g5 now, um, uh, and that's why I played rook e1.
But I might have been able to kick on g4 last move. I'm really not. I'm, I'm not. I don't think I was. But, um. Anyways. Normally they don't play the fishing pole variation in the exchange very, uh, very low. But no, the most popular move is actually f6 uh, after castles. And that's what I was sort of angling for. Because I know that position a little bit better. Um. But, yeah. And so he's actually taking a deep thing. Because he's, yeah, he's trying to figure out can I to take or not. Or, to move or not to move, that's the question. And he gave me an answer with bishop d7, so he thought I was threatening to take. Um, and that's good news, because now I can go forth in the middle of the board by playing d4. And d4 is not a move that black likes to see if he's not completely developed, because uh, it opens up the position very quickly, and the, white king, and the black king's still in the middle. So now I have to calculate, can I take on e5 a few times, or do I play... Uh, knight c4 first. Not sure about this. I'm going to go knight c4 first. Because I like the idea of, uh, of putting more pressure on e5 before I actually take on e5. The other point is that if black castles queenside, which may be desirable, that's actually a blunder because of bishop g5. And I think this is what he missed, because now I'm picking off an exchange. I maybe should have played uh, knight takes d6 check first, because uh, I don't like that I allowed this queen, this move. But I can go bishop g5, and uh, my bishop is saved, but I, I, I maybe should have played knight takes d6 check before I took on d8. Um, that was this was a little bit that was a little bit sloppy because now he can play f6 and my bishop goes d3 and I'm still up in exchange with a real, real, really reasonable position, but he has more pieces on the board to uh, to try to drum up some counterplay. So yeah, queen f7. Um, I'm gonna take on e5 because I think it makes sense to uh, trade a few more pieces. And if he goes f takes e5, his bishop is completely dead on on d6. So um, that's why I think d takes e5 is a good move. Um, but he might actually wind up playing f takes e5 and trying to play solidly. Yeah. Um, so that makes a little bit of sense. Um, and uh, yeah, my position is not as clean and, as I would have wanted it to be because, uh, yeah, it's, it's just not as great. So I'm going to go knight d2. Uh, that's the first order of business. And the idea is to maybe put this knight on c4. Put on a more active square because if I move my queen away from d1, he was actually threatening bishop takes h3, um, which would have been uh, a real, real bad disaster for me because then my knight on uh, f3 would have been weak, loosened, and I just would have lost a pawn for nothing. So um, just making sure that my pieces are overly protected is another thing to just be and keep in mind when you're playing the sort of positional game. Um, and I'm an exchanged up, so. I will intend to trade where I can. Many might be wondering why knight g5 wasn't played last move. I think it would have been a mistake. But anyways, I can't explain that now. Rook f8 does give me this pawn on h5, and I'm wondering if I can take it. I think I can, so I'm going to take it. Um, uh, he could go rook h8 and maybe argue that he has the five, h file now, but um, I'll just go queen f3, and I think everything is reasonably covered. Again, the other point, a po important point to point out here is that the bishop on d6 is not playing because of the pawn on e5. So uh, it's really not a, something I have to worry about when I'm thinking about the pieces pointed at my king. The bishop on d6 is not one of those pieces. So when I, I look at the count, I basically see four pieces, including the black queen, that are really pressuring me or have the potential to pressure me, and that's a good thing. So queen e6, okay... Hmm. I'm going to go knight c4. 
I, no, I'm not. No, it skips too much activity. What am I going to do? I'm going to go knight... No. Yeah, I'm going to go knight c4. The point is that he can't actually take that knight because of uh, the g6. Well, he can take the knight, but then I trade a, a, another pair of pieces and play queen takes g6. Um, so that was the idea. And, yeah, now I'm starting to lo lose some pawns, but I thought these trades would be good for me. Hmm, do I play b3 or not? No, I'm just going to play queen takes g7. I mean, I'm, I'm up in exchange here. This shouldn't be a tough conversion. Now I might be able to just play h4, h5, h6. Um, again, I'm up in exchange. This shouldn't be that hard. Queen c4, okay. The idea is to play queen g8. I'm going to play b3. Attack the queen. Now queen h6, trying to trade the queens. And I'm a little bit down on time here, so my comments cannot be as thorough. So I'm going to stop talking. should win this though. And yeah, a little bit, I won the game, a little bit sloppy conversion, um, but I wasn't exchange up, so if I defend reasonably, just trade pieces as I managed to do in this time scramble, I won the game, and he blundered a little bit, and I won the game. But, um, but as far as the position is concerned, um, things were going pretty well, and um, uh, yeah, just nothing, uh, nothing really bad. Um, as far as, uh, the opening was concerned, um, really the big mistake, uh, but before he lost the exchange was, uh, was probably, uh, allowing this d4 break, um, because if I play this d4 break and the king is still on e8 and my rook is on e1, you can see the rook lined up against the king and bad things happen when it's like that. And I'm just able to get pressure really quickly. The mi mistake I made, or at least the one I'm going to be really critical of, is after bishop g5, queen e6, I should take on d6 first instead of playing bishop takes d8. Because I take with check and then take on d8, and it's just a massive difference in terms of the activity that black gets. Here, I, I allowed black to get a little bit of counterplay, and he took that... Uh, he was able to last way longer than he should have. So, Anyways. Um, the other thing... Uh, I think a lot of people wonder about when they're talking about positional A, they're like, oh, D4, E4, and then they're like, oh, of course, D4 is the more positional opening, or C4 is the more positional opening. Basically, anything but E4 is the general consensus if you're a positional player. But the truth is, you can play any you can play any first move positionally. Like there are lines in against any against any opening you could face with E4 that um, 
that can allow you to play in a positional fashion. You just have to choose. You just have to choose them. Um, so uh, you can play Bishop B5 check against Sicilians, for instance, and I mean that's that. So um, it's sort of a myth or a misconception to suggest that you can't play dynamically against certain, or you can't play positionally against certain lines or dynamically against certain lines. All right, this stuff is aggressive. G4 and H4. I'm going to go H5 um, because I don't like when someone's just pushing against me like that. But E3 now, and he's going to go Bishop D3. I know it because now my bishop on, my bishop there's a little bit loose. So I know he's going to go Bishop D3. Hmm. I'm going to go Bishop D6. Might as well contest his bishop while... Um, when he's about to contest mine. And knight h3, very interesting move. Essentially um, trying to uh, to establish his knight on f4. I'm going to go bishop f5 with the idea of threatening bishop takes h3. Um, I'm wondering if I could still do it before bishop takes, before I take on d6. But he has the option of going Bishop takes c7, and I have to calculate that. Bishop takes h3, bishop takes c7, queen takes c7, and then he has rook takes h3, and it's unfortunately still a pawn up. So nope, I'm rejecting that. And now he's going to go knight f4, and I don't like this. This knight on f4 is very annoying. But I don't know if there's much I can do about it, so that's that. Um, very annoying that this knight is on f4, though. I, 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 it's, it's a problem, for sure. The one thing I like about my position is I have the open C file, so maybe there's something I can do with that. So bishop d3, I'm going to go knight e7, and this is my idea uh, to sort of play knight e7 and maybe take with my own knight, establish my own knight on a nice outpost. Um, but I don't know. It looks it looks it's slightly dodgy. I'm not sure. Because actually, okay, e4, I'm sort of happy to see I can take and play bishop g4. I think I thought he should have taken and played g6, which would have been an excellent undermining of my structure. Okay, bishop e2. He's playing a very interesting way, um, a way I did not figure could be played. Um, hmm. If I take on e2, I help him get closer to castling. So I'm going to play queen b6, um, which uh, is very double-edged and maybe not entirely correct. But the point is that I don't help him get... I, if he castles queen side, he has a clear positional domination and just he's, he's, all his pieces are better placed. So I need to sort of disrupt that um, opportunity. And so by playing queen b6, I'm sort of eyeing the d4 pawn and the b2 pawn. I need to disrupt white's ability or possibility or potentiality to castle queenside. Um, so I'm going to go queen b6, I'm eyeing b2, maybe rook c8's in the cards. Okay. So if I take on b2 right away, he has knight a4, and then after queen b4 check, he has c3. So I have to take on g4. Um, but now he has to defend b2, and I'm curious as to how he does that. At least, I think I have a little bit of counterplay here. Definitely not suggesting I'm bad or anything like that. All right, so queen d3 is very interesting. He's saying if I take on b2, he has rook b1, and he's saying he gets a massive, massive initiative. And I am sort of agree with him, honestly. But I'm going to play e5, another sort of disrupting move, trying to sort of, you know, get something going. Uh, while uh, Although maybe I shouldn't have just given the d5 square up. Tough to say. My idea was to play queen takes d4, um, and I'm going to go for that, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. The point is, is that if he, um, the point is that if he plays knight c7 check, I'm going to just go king d8, and uh, at least I get a pawn for the exchange, because uh, the knight will be trapped. So that was my thought process, but it's, it might just be a flawed process. Um, so my idea here was to go knight c5. Now I'm going to take first and then go knight c5. Um, 
And I think I have a decent counterplay here. I'm definitely not better. I'm probably just losing. But I have decent counterplay if he doesn't find some good moves. I think a really strong move here might just be to castle because I'm he's hitting the f7 pawn. And that might spell tr real trouble for me. Knight b5, I think, is a mistake because... Um, why is that a mistake? I can just go king c7, and I'm actually attacking the a8, uh, the a8 knight now. So I think I'm getting some counterplay. Now some things are hanging. D3's hanging. A8 hanging. Castles would have been really strong. So knight c7, okay, but now I can go a6. And he has to give up one of the knights. And again, I'm, I'm definitely worse, no doubt about it, but I have a little bit of play here. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm not worse, excuse me, I'm losing. Uh, but I have a little bit of counterplay. Hmm. I'm counting on these really weird knights to give some really pesky checks. So if he attacks my rook on f1, if he attacks my knight on f1, then I was counting on knight d3 check. Alright, so rook h4. Yeah, now my knights look really, really clumsy. Um, but again, I've, I've got managed to get rid of these, some of these pawns, so I'm going to stop talking now and try to save the game. Oh, and that's a blunder. Look at those pesky knights. Now I just need to trade a little bit because I'm up material, so I just would love to trade. Um,
and that's the game, because I was going to win the knight or the rook there. Those knights, man, real pesky. And notice how I keep my king two diagonals away so there are no checks. And that's the game. So, uh, yeah, I definitely had a losing position at some point there down the exchange. Um, the, the really critical position, I thought, um, when I was losing uh, after the queen trade was I thought here castling is a super strong move. Because, again, you want to rescue that. You you're probably not going to rescue this now in A8, but if you can create enough distraction while uh, I have to try and rescue it or while I have to try and capture it, I'm in real trouble. And castling kingside has the benefit here of not only getting the king off of the threat of knight takes d3 check, it also attacks the f7 pawn and, and gets the rook to the seventh rank. And if the rook gets to the seventh rank, I just can't imagine that the king can hold everything down and uh, on the seventh rank and uh, allow the, it's not allow the knight to escape. And so I think it'd be winning here. I'm curious. On this engine, we'll see right now um, if it loads. All right, so the computer's saying king d2, which is probably a similar idea because it's saying king d2 and then rook a g1 or rook a f1. Um, I really feel like castle is super strong here. So, anyways, it's another victory in the books. Um, one more, and that'll be it. So. All right, Urosh. So it's amazing. I didn't play. I'm not playing any title players today. So um, I'm gonna play B3 again. Um, oh, B B6. All right, now I'm gonna go E4. You know, you can't copy me, man. Come on, man. What you doing? Um, and now it's gonna be some weird Sicilian type position because I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go D4 now that he, at the at the right moment, but I'm gonna sort of delay it. I'm not gonna play it right away. I'm gonna go e5. I, I don't like he's provoking me with that uh, with that move, so I'm gonna go do that. And then the question is, do I play? Do I take on e4? Or do I not? Um, I mean, do I take on d5 or do I play knight e4? If I take on d5, he probably plays bishop takes d5. I'm gonna take on d5. Uh, e takes d5 is, a, is sort of a surprise. Did not expect that. Um, I didn't think he could do that, actually. And the reason I didn't think he'd do that, why didn't I think he can do that? I think it was d4. Because now this bishop on b7 is just locked behind its pawns. Uh, and so I was thinking if I fix that chain, that should be good for me, right? So I'm going to go bishop d3 now. And I, I have a feeling that this bishop, his bishop on b7 is positionally bankrupt. But I have to prove it. I, man, I'm so close to Greek gifting. If my pawn was on h4, I had I have bishop takes h7 check. But it doesn't quite work here. I could play h4, but then he just goes h6. Right? Well, I can't help it. I'm going to go h4. It looks too enticing. And he's going to go h6. But I just couldn't help myself. I could not. I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. I was too excited. Yeah. And the reason I went h6 anyways, I'm going to go g4. And this is totally unwarranted and unnecessary. But it just looks like too much fun. And I can't help myself. My argument is that this bishop on b7 is not playing in the game. So... I don't see any immediate pressure on my position. Um, and yeah, now I'm going to go g5 and just try to open this king side up. And yet, that is a move that, uh, that is a move h5, but I was hoping I'd be able to play g6. And the point is, is now I'm just, I'm going to loosen up this king side even further. And I have a dream. I have a dream that one day. I will put my queen on h4, and great things will happen. And that is what I intend to do. Put my queen on h... Or it's not h4, sorry. I'm ruining. I have a dream that my queen will go to h5. 
And okay, Queen E8 sort of shows the magnitude of that, or the gravity of the situation, because he sort of is seeing that this might be an idea. And I'm not going to take an F7. I'm going to go Rook G1, cementing my my pressure over the G6 square. And I think he's in trouble. And C4 is a move I'd anticipated, but I'm not actually going to cop that um, that bishop because or that pawn because it opens the line for his bishop. So I was going to go bishop f5 or move the bishop to e2. What is the choice? Maybe even knight g5, actually. Does knight g5 win on the spot? If knight g5, c takes d5, I have queen takes h5, which threatens man at h7. If knight g5, his only move is f takes g6, right? Right. I'm going to go bishop f5. I think that's the most sensible. And now he'll probably go bishop c8, if I know anything about chess. But if he goes bishop c8, I can probably trade and still go knight g5 or something along those lines. Alright, and d takes e5 looks like a bad move because I'm putting more pressure on this h5 pawn. I can play knight takes e5. What's this guy doing? I'm going to have a high weight h5 before I'm done. And I look at this, queen takes h5 and just this, this, this permanent highway on the square. So, okay, so now I have so many choices. Bishop takes g6 looks the most appealing because I'm just attacking the queen and threatening mate. So I'm going to do that one. He has one spite check on f2 if he wishes, but I can just go king e2. And there's no more menacing checks. And uh, again, look at the activity in the pieces. I mean, okay, I, l I played a little bit recklessly, but the activity was there. And boom, he resigns on move 19. Wow. A lot of short games today, but I think the real big mistake was after knight takes d5 here, um, e takes d5 is positionally, I mean, it's okay if you get in d6 here. If you're able to get in d6, then maybe you have an argument that, um, that this bishop will eventually be free because black can go d4. But I played d4 before he can play d4 himself, and this bishop on b7 is fixed there. Uh, and I say when that bishop comes out. h4 was extravagant and not necessary. I could have just castled here. Um, and again, I just have a nice positional advantage based on the fact that his pawn structure is slightly worse, and um, the bishop on b7 is locked behind its own pawn and doesn't have the liberty of freeing itself. So um, I played h4 just because I thought it'd be fun. And uh, and h6 was the move, I think, to avoid those Greek gifts. And I just thought, okay, now these play h6, he's created a hook, and I can play g4. Uh, definitely not the most correct move. Again, I should have castled the, the past few moves. But again, he played slow now d6, and now g5, I'm coming with the hook, and he's in real trouble here. So, And I think this position is already much better for white. Actually curious. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like, yeah, it's already plus one for white. Um, just based on the fact that I can just open up the, the line really quickly. And uh, that was that. So uh, let me see how bad. I'm actually really curious. How bad was h4? If I go back here after h6. I right, say, so yeah, castle. Like I said, castling is the most sensible. I want to see how bad h4 was. All right, and the answer is bad. After h4, he can go knight c6. And the position is close to equal, but it will be much easier to play. Black's side. Well, now it's saying equality. Wow. The computer's a funny beast. And that's why you do not analyze Blitz games, or you shouldn't. Uh, I do sometimes. just, But it's really not really analyzing the game in its entirety. Just looking at a few moments where I'm just curious what the right move was. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you got something out of that about the positional ploys and stuff that is sort of I'm toying with when I play, and um, hopefully uh, you can uh, add some of those to your uh, toolbox. All right, till next time.